My immediate reaction to John asking for my help to die was to keep my mouth firmly shut. I could feel tears welling up in my throat and if I knew that if I opened my mouth to speak, he'd hear them and he would think that it was the nature of the death that he was choosing that was upsetting me. In fact, what was upsetting me was being forced to face the fact that he was dying. Right at the beginning of the illness, I'd looked at the fact that he was dying and I'd wrapped it up in a little box and put it back in my mind. Here he was now, bringing it right back to the forefront. Oh goodness, yes of course. There is no good solution to the situation we're in. You're going to die. But this looks like a way to avoid what could be a pretty awful end. lost the ability to, to walk, to stand, to transfer between wheelchairs, to swallow, to speak. By the time he died, there was very little he could do for himself. Most of what defined him as a human being had been taken away. When John asked whether I thought going to Dignitas was a good idea, my reply was, it's your life and I'll help you to do whatever you want with it. What I had no idea about at that time was what helping him might, might mean for me, or for him, or for our wider family. He had done some research. He knew that if I helped him to die here in the UK, I might face a penalty of 14 years, and he wasn't prepared to take that risk. What I was concerned about was whether somebody would stop John making that journey to Switzerland. I remember thinking all the way to the airport that there might be somebody there waiting to stop John getting onto the plane. It was horrible not knowing where we stood legally. Even now, people don't know where they stand legally. They may have some guidance from the Director of Public Prosecutions on the policy in assisting suicide, but it still reserves the right to prosecute you if the circumstances look wrong. If John had been able to go to his GP and ask for medical help to die, the first thing would have been different was that he would have lived longer. He had to have some bodily strength to get to Dignitas. John would also have been able to die in his own home. He wouldn't have died in bed. He didn't die in bed in Switzerland. He died in his wheelchair, sitting up. If he could have stood up, he would have done that. In Milton Keynes, he would have died sitting in the bay window of his flat, looking out at the sun as it set, and listening to music of his choice. Probably something he liked and I didn't, like Shostakovich. And watching the sunset on John's life. I, I can't tell you how much better that would have been. We need to change the law so that people can ask their doctors for help to die. One of the most important things at Dignity in Dying is highlighting is the importance of choice at the end of life. And I know that the light that went on in my brother's eyes when he knew about Dignitas was because he knew he'd have a choice. He would be in control at the end of his life. And that, to him, meant a huge amount. It meant the difference between uncertainty, unknowing, and knowing for sure that I would hold his hand right through to the end. And I think that's what I did.